Hi, and welcome to this section of the Pre-Algebra Tutor. And in this section, we're going to cover the topic of greater than, less than, and equal to. Uh, it's not a hard section, really. I think everyone here knows to how to judge if one number is bigger than another number. That's all that we're going to be doing in this section. We're going to use a number line to kind of graphically represent it. The only thing that's really a little bit of a tricky point is using those symbols, those greater than symbols, less than symbols that you know can trip some people up because it's a symbol that you haven't used up until now but it's it's very very simple and we'll see that uh, here so let's just go right into it you can compare you can compare two numbers with the following uh, three symbols and this is the part that usually trips people up greater than symbol, less than symbol, and of course the equal to symbol. I mean the equals I think everybody is, is no problem figuring out what equals means. We'll get into it in a minute a little bit a little bit more. But these symbols here can get tricky a little bit because they look the same, they're just pointed different directions and it's basically hard for people to remember a lot of times uh, which way to point them basically. So let's just get into it. The easiest way to do this is just doing a lot of examples and you'll find out that it's really simple. In fact, you'll probably be asking yourself, why did I ever have a problem with this? So let's look at this. Um, these are going to be things from, from your basic math. The number 5, actually, I want to, to switch here. The number 5 is greater than, this is just an example, the number 5 is greater than 1, so, drum roll, we say the number 5, 5 is greater than 1. That's how you write it. 5 is greater than 1. So this is expressing something that you already know. I mean, you know that 5 is greater than 1. You can say it in a sentence. It's just that figuring out which way to point this arrow gives some people some problems a lot of times. Here's what you do. And it's very simple, actually, once you have it explained to you like this. The arrow always points to the smaller number. Always. Always, always, always. It doesn't matter if you're you know, a lot of people think of, oh, it's this symbol or it's this symbol. So which one do I use? Don't think of it like that. Just think of it as an arrow. It's just an arrow. It's one symbol. The arrow can either point this way or it can point that way. And the arrow always points to the smaller number. Always, always, always. That's the way it works. And you can kind of see that what they mean when they, this, the reason it points like this is that you can see that the symbol, when you blow it up, it's big on this end and it's small on this end. So when you write it like this, 5 is next to the big end, and 1 is next to the small end. So it's trying to tell you that 5 is the bigger number because it's near the opened end of the arrow, and the number 1 is the smaller number because it's next to the smaller uh, end of the arrow. Now, you don't need to remember that too much. You can really just sort of do exactly what I told you. It's either going to, it's always, always going to point to the smaller number. So let's do a few more. 10 is greater than 7, so you guessed it, 10 points to 7. 10 is greater than 7, always points to the smaller number, always. That's the only rule in this entire section. 3 is greater than 0, so 3 is greater than zero. It always points to the smaller number. The opened end of these arrows are always next to the larger numbers that you're comparing, and the closed ends are always next to the smaller number, and that's just all that symbol is really trying to tell you. Okay, now let's go here and switch gears a little bit. Let's say the number four is less than eight, so we, uh, we say the following. 4 is less than 8. Now, notice the arrow has flipped around and pointed to the other direction. But, also notice the arrow is still pointing to the smaller number. The open side of the arrow is still next to the bigger number. The smaller side of the arrow is still next to the smaller number. So, you see, the reason it gets confusing initially is because people look at these symbols and they see them as two separate symbols. Greater than, less than. Which one do I use? Which way does it point? Right? But you don't really need to think of it that way. You just think of it as one arrow, and the pointy end of the arrow always goes to the smaller number. That's, that's, that's it. That's how, you, that's how you write it. Uh, 
Do a couple more. Three is less than five. So three is less than five. It always points to the smaller number. 13 is less than 16. So 13 is less than 16. Always points to the smaller number. Okay? So, you know what? That's really the, you know, quote unquote challenging part of the class. A lot of people have problems with that because these arrows can get confusing. Which way do they point? It always points to the smaller number. Now, now here's for the really easy part. Six is equal to six. So, and this one, I mean, it's not a real problem. Most people understand this. Six is equal to six. The equal sign is just telling you that both sides of that guy are exactly the same. Uh, let's see here. Seven is equal to seven. So, Seven is equal to seven. Now, this kind of like you think, oh, who cares about that? That's so simple. The equal sign is just used here to kind of give you an idea if you've never seen an equal sign before. I know that you all have, so it's not a, not a problem. But later on, when we start talking about equations, you're going to see that equal sign pop up in the equation. And what it means literally is the left-hand side of whatever's over here could be a big algebra expression is exactly equal to what is on the right-hand side, which could be something else, another algebra expression. It means that at the end of the day, both of them are the same thing. Here, we're doing it with numbers, so it seems obvious. But later on, when we use equal sign in algebra equations, you're not going to know the answer. You're going to have to solve the equation to find the answer using the rules that we're going to have for you. And um, that's what that's telling you. So that's really it, but uh, greater than, less than, or equal to. Now, we're going to do one more thing before we uh, button up the section just to give you a little bit of additional practice. So what we're going to do is draw a big long number line again, just so you can have a, as a reference, really. So this is 0. And let me go ahead and do this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So here we have negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 8, negative 9, negative 10. I'm going to do the same thing I did before on top and on bottom just to keep it clear. 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, negative 9, negative 10. Like that. So that's just a reference really for the problems that are coming below. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare the following two numbers with uh, the following symbols, greater than, less than, equal to. That's all you have to do. So basically we're going to, we're going to uh, have two numbers provided and we're just going to have to put the right symbol in there. What if we're comparing the numbers 2 and 5? So you might see that on a test, 2 and 5, and your job is to um, put, put the right symbol between them. So you would write down 2 and 5, and like I said, the arrow always points to the smaller number. That's it. That's the answer. And the way you read this is 2 is less than 5. The reason you write it as less than is because when the arrow points to the left, that's the way you read it. It's less than. So, And you can see from the number line, 2 and 5, I mean, you don't really have to do any thinking with numbers like that, but 2 is less than 5, so that's why we draw it that way. Uh, for the next one, let's look at 8 and 3. And we know which one's bigger. So if we put 8 and we put 3 there, uh, then the arrow always points to the smaller number. Always points to the smaller number. And the way you read this is 8 is greater than 3 because the open side is off to the left. So you read that as greater than. And of course, 8 is greater than 3. So you just use that as a check even though you don't really need it. Let's look at C. Negative 2 compared with 5. So let's say I just have them written like that and the teacher says... Uh, write the proper symbol in there. Well, the arrow always points to the smaller number. Negative 2, which is way over here, is certainly less than 5, because this is way over here on the other side of 0. So it always points to the smaller number. For D, you have negative 2 and negative 5. So you have to figure out which way this, this goes. 
the smaller number here is actually the negative 5. So that arrow has to go that way. And this is where it gets people a little bit um, confused maybe because you might look at the 5 and say, well, that's bigger than the 2. But that's why I have the number line here. Negative 2 is here. Negative 5 is way off to the left here. These are smaller numbers. Let me actually, uh, this might actually help. I think you probably know this by now, but going this direction is smaller. And of course, going this way is bigger. These are bigger and bigger numbers, but they're all negative. So in fact, this is, I owe you more pencils. I owe you nine pencils. I owe you 12 pencils. These are smaller numbers going that direction. So it points to the smaller number, which in this case is negative five. Now, the next one after this is, let's say I'm looking at two and negative five. And again, you have to point to the smaller number. The smaller number is always going to be negative when you have a positive and negative. Negative 5 is here. Positive 2 is over here. Of course, negative 5 is much smaller, so it points that way. 2 is greater than negative 5 is how you read that. Okay. F is negative 8 and negative 3. And you always point to the smaller number. In this case, is negative 8 because if you look at the board here, negative 8 is way over here. Negative 3 is way over here. This one is farther that way, so it's smaller. You see, here I owe you more pencils, so it's smaller. Always points to the smaller number. Negative 8 is less than negative 3. And it looks to be a little backwards at first glance because the number is actually larger. But when you have this negative here, it's farther on the other side of 0. That's why it's smaller. Okay, now let's look at... Uh, the next guy, G, which is, uh, let's say, 2.5 and 3.5. The fact that there's a decimal here has nothing to do with it. You really just still do the same thing. You always point to the smaller number, which is 2.5. On the number line, this is 2 and 3, so 2 and a half is here, and 3.5 is over here. So 2.5 is less than 3.5. I mean, you already knew that, but just to kind of give you proof of it. H. Negative 5.3, negative 5.4. You always point to the smaller number. And in this case, again, it's a little bit tricky. The smaller number is the bigger negative number. So if you look at it, this is actually the smaller number. This negative 5, um, negative 5.3 would be here, and negative 5.4 would be a little bit farther over. Just to make it totally clear, if you were to blow up the number line here, and let's say this is negative 5, and this is negative 6, you know? So 0 is over here, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7. So what you have here is, uh, this would be like um, negative 5.3, and right here would be like negative 5.4, a little bit farther that way. So negative 5.4 is actually the smaller number because it's farther that way. It's farther negative. It's farther negative. Okay, now let's look here at another one, I, negative uh, 4.8 and negative 4.7. So you have exactly the same thing here. Basically, it's always going to point to the negative number that is farther that way. Negative 4.8 is going to be closer to 5 than negative 4.7 is, so it's going to be the, actually the smaller number. So it's always going to point uh, that direction. Okay, just a couple of couple of additional, and then we'll, we'll call it done. So J, and negative 38, and negative 60, which one of those is smaller? Even though 60 is a bigger number, you would think that it, that's actually bigger. It's actually smaller because it's negative. So this number line doesn't go far enough, but if I had negative 38 like here, negative 60 would be even farther over that way, even more in the hole. Here I may owe you 38 pieces of gum, and here I may owe you 60 pieces of gum. That's a smaller number. Uh, I mean, it's more gum that I owe you, but the fact that I have a deficit means that I'm in the hole even more. So it's smaller. That's the reason why we say it's smaller. Um, and so K, let's say negative 5 and negative 5. Well, here we get to the easy ones. These are exactly the same thing, so we say they're equal. And, you know, 3 and 3, of course, are equal. So they're not greater than or less than. They're equal to. So I just want to put that in for completeness. So you can see that it's really easy. I mean, basically, you, you always point this guy 
to the smaller number. And you do it consistently, no matter if it's a positive number or a negative number, you always, always, always point the arrow to the smaller number. That's just the way it is. The only reason that it gets a little tricky is that because you're just new to thinking about negative numbers, when you have something like this, it looks like this is a bigger number. So you get confused in which way to point the arrow. You have to train your mind to think about that number line. And when you have a large negative number, it's way over here to the left. That's a smaller number. You have a bigger negative or, or a, a negative number that's closer this way, that's the larger number. And that's something that you have to practice. So I hope that these examples have solidified this in your mind. It's very important, actually. Actually, this section is very important because when we get into adding and subtracting uh, negative and positive numbers here in just a minute, uh, we're going to basically assume that you know how to tell which one of the numbers is bigger, negative or positive. So I've given you enough examples and enough tools here to be able to master that. Make sure you know which one of these is bigger and which one of them is smaller because when you add and subtract numbers, it's as you can kind of guess, you're going to be using these, these concepts. So it's going to be really important to know that as you, as you work those problems to make sure that you get the right answer. I'm Jason. Uh, I think we're making good progress in this course. Make sure and practice your problems. Uh, if you need to watch the section again, do it again. Pause the video as you watch it the second time. Practice the problems that I've presented. Go on into the next few sections and I think you'll find that this stuff is not really difficult. It just is a matter of practice.